Waraming Alawa Minigau Purua. Hello, how are you my friend? Come and sit down by the fire while I gently press your fingers and tell your story. Tell us how you first started making art. Yeah, I first started making when I was uh, probably just finished in high school, watching my older brother, and then from then it was so I got incarcerated and then started to practice a bit more with the, the brothers inside and, and my own brother eventually. You mentioned to me that there was someone when you were young who taught you about painting. Like an older brother, Dutson, the old man brought him in under the wing because he's come from like a broken family and he lived with us since the age of 14, 16. He was six years older than me and he just, he started the dot work and so he sort of taught me the storyline, how each dot means everything, what colour means it, you know, the earth colours and all that such and explain the totems and, and all that stuff from there. So it was not just painting, he was also teaching you really deep cultural knowledge Yeah, well. the story, yeah, and it, yep, <clears throat> about every line, every stroke, it's, yeah, it means something. about the first time you picked up a paintbrush inside and started to work in that way? It was all about the ocean because I missed the ocean. I'd been in, I was at the end of the 10 year mark that I'd just finished. So that's when I started expressing a lot of coming home and all that sort of such. And it was always the, you know, the lonely worry on the rock, you know, heading home and all that stuff. But that's when I started expressing it the most and then pretty much didn't pick up another one until, it was just sad, until my next sentence, which was the end of that parole in Queensland. And that's when it kicked off more, when I was actually incarcerated with my older brother, you know, sitting in the same cell and reminiscent of such of, you know. And that's when it all started getting more expressed, I think. You'd share a canvas and do different Yeah, I do, I do parts, you do parts. And I was, funny enough, I was teaching the older brother some of my techniques that I learnt from, you know, adopted brothers. What does river mean to you? That's the flow, that's without the rivers there is, you know. There is no life, so it's life again, about the rivers and the ocean. What does it mean to you, that sense of connection of the waterways? Home, I suppose, <laughs> it's home, yeah. It's where we all meet, it's where everything comes to par, you know. Well, even back in the ancestors' days, that's what they done, and even to this day, that's what we still do, you know what I mean? Like, we always go down with the family, meet down the river or the ocean and work our way up the river back to the ocean. Or... So the flow is what connects it all? Yeah, yeah. And your artwork has a beautiful flow about it. Yeah, I think in that I represent a lot of ancestors with the diamonds and stuff from the south east coast and plus I just like the repetition and the lines of it, especially when on my shields and stuff and how you actually look at it and every line means something. Can you say a sentence or so about that process for you of your own recovery yep. in the making of the art? Well, you know, us fellas, we don't talk about stuff, but if you can put it on paper or, or canvas and express it and then tell it later, you've still put it out, it's on there or up there, wherever you can put it. And then later on you can talk about it, you can bring it up, but at least you've expressed it and got it out, you know. I've, I've done that with a lot of paintings as well, and that's why a few of them, like the Bami one and stuff, when my brother that we've done, that's about our journey and stuff. Like, it was hard to let it go, but it's more of my point to put it out there so other people can learn from that. If not, it's off my chest as well, and it's off my brother's chest, you know, so. This three-piece painting represents the deaths in custody and the system that seems to always fail us. 
Each diamond represents one of my brothers and sisters who have passed. The cross action represents the family ties of each brother and sister and their broken hearts along the way. I've learnt a lot from Daniel and he very much can be a mentor to me. Um, with Daniel in particular, I feel like his work is just so much bigger than him. He doesn't just do it for him as much as he is on his journey of healing. He creates a pathway for others where others can heal as well. Can you say something about that mentoring role that you've played inside and would like to continue to do? Why is that important to you? Just to give the brothers purpose and not <clears throat> come back through the revolving door and have that, that stability when they come out, even if it is art or employment or connection back to culture, but you get them staying on the river or down the ocean or wherever with the boys, you know, that's, that's the connection they get. Especially back to family, that's the main thing, you know, like, we might go inside and think that, oh, you know, it's all done bad and, you know, you're doing time, but really your whole family is doing time. Brothers, sisters, cousins, everyone. So that's what my mentor role, <clears throat> hopefully I can bounce that off the boys to do the same, you know what I mean? And I've seen a lot of brothers in there that couldn't even put a line together let alone figure out how to use a line brush and show them that and then be able to, three months later, hand in a painting to a sister girl and then, you know what I mean, they're wrapped. Sort of gets you, not emotional, but happy emotional that, you know, you can, you've left and, you know, he's learned how to read or write, it showed him little things or he's learned how to even tell his story that he's, you know, auntie or uncle's told him, but he could never paint it, you know, but then all of a sudden he's got stuff in torch that, sells everyone that goes in there.